Good morning. Originally, I was uh, slated to talk about the survey that Digiday and PulsePoint uh, convened uh, earlier uh, last month. Uh, I think my role today is, after that discussion with Jen and Brian, is to bring this room back up. So I'll do my best in doing that. So on this cold, dreary, rainy day here in Southwest Florida, I want you to remember two words about this presentation. Gaga and Tony. So what, what I'd like to ask each of you, in the middle of your tables, there are paddles. And I would like you to grab a Tony Bennett paddle and a Lady Gaga paddle. And so while you're doing that, what I'd like to ask you to do is raise your Tony Bennett paddle if you or your client has run a content marketing program over the last 12 months. All right, so I see about 30% or so. All right, next. If you or your client has bought or sold programmatic media over the last 12 months, raise your, your Lady Gaga paddle. So about 80%, 85%. So the 15% who didn't raise their Tony, their Lady Gaga paddle, are you at the right conference? <laughs> Should you be at the medical conference down the hallway? So content marketing and programmatic are kind of like the Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga of ad tech. You'd never think of them working together. Right, you think of them as opposites things that wouldn't quite work, they would never, never work together. Let's look at how perception differs from reality. Let's look at three ways that these, uh, these are different. The first is strategic. And when we talk about strategy and ad tech, we talk about funnels. Not the ones that you did in, in college with beer, but the sales funnel. So one is around lower funnel, one is around mid to upper funnel. When we talk about objectives, we talk about direct response, and we talk about branding. And when we talk about metrics, dare I say, we talk about click-through rate, and we talk about time spent or engagement. So in a world where the average American sees 3,500 advertising units a day, and where you're more likely to climb Mount Everest than click on a display ad, we think the future of advertising is changing before us. We think it's gonna become more and more about delivering meaningful brand engagement to the right consumer at scale. And we believe consumer, uh, CMOs, we believe advertisers, we believe brands will demand more from us. They can demand more engagement, more word of mouth uh, marketing and better return on ad spends. So Digiday and PulsePoint combined and partnered to convene a survey. We surveyed many of you in this room as well as many others. We had about 330 respondents. And we wanted to explore what you thought about programmatic and content and what it meant to us as an industry. And the survey uncovered a lot about where our industry is going, and more and more about what creative, high format, custom programmatic uh, ad units look like in the future. And this was reinforced earlier by Dennis Buckheim from Yahoo, who talked about native advertising and custom and high impact units. And our research uh, showed quite a bit of what Dennis uh, actually said. So 83% of the respondents said that they believe content marketing and programmatic are, are gonna go programmatic by 2017. What does this mean? That programmatic and content are gonna collide much sooner than we ever expected. So just like Tony and Gaga, what once seemed like a crazy idea is gonna become a beautiful reality where old fashioned uh, tradition meets new school disruption. So let's look at three of these trends. First, as more dollars move into programmatic, campaign objectives will change as well. 
And as they change, we're going to have to change as an industry. And most importantly, high impact creatives will come into play. And we'll have to be able to serve the interests of our clients. So if you look, and this is confirmed earlier, if you looked at some of the research that we found, 62% today say that they're buying direct media. In 12 months, our research showed that that's going to be inversed. 62% will be buying programmatic at the expense of direct. Further, our survey showed that 50% of the respondents expect more money to migrate from search to data-driven display. So what does that matter? Well, first, search is a $55 billion industry. $55 billion industry. So as more and more of those dollars migrate from search to data-driven display, it's going to force us in this room and outside of this room to innovate and innovate really quickly. And as these dollars flow from display to search, they're just not going to be about direct response. It's going to be more and more around branding and mid to, mid to upper funnel uh, engagement. So moving up the funnel into new fronts and new formats is going to become the norm. And our technology, our agencies, and everyone else in this room who serves the industry will have to uh, apply against that. So the future, about, a future of advertising will become more and more about delivering meaningful brand engagement and being able to find that right consumer and deliver them at a cost-efficient scale. So the old adage where we used to talk about finding, taking the right ad to the right person at the right time is going to become more and more around placing that right piece of content in front of the right person, in the right place, at the right time, on the right device, and at the right geo. A much more sophisticated ecosystem than what we know today. Our survey also gleaned quite a bit from where programmatic buying is going to come from. Most of you expect content marketing and sponsored units will grow 114% year over year. Moreover, 29% growth in digital video, 43% in custom display, those high impact ad units I talked about before. And last but not least, 45% of you, 45% of you expect programmatic TV to grow over the next 12 months. Which really brings us back to content and programmatic. And equally as important, Lady Gaga and Tony Bennett. So 97% of you at some point have run a content marketing program, which actually differs quite a bit from our earlier survey, where about 30 or 35% of you said you did. And why is this important? Why is content marketing important in today's world? Well, first and foremost, 90% of consumers find content more useful than ads. That's no shock, huh? 70% prefer getting to know a brand through a piece of content rather than a, a display ad. And most importantly, especially for us in the room, content ads deliver three times the amount of leads per person or per dollar than display ads. So content marketing, you can see, is moving up the funnel, taking more dollars, and creating more lift for our advertisers. So when we think about this survey and the results that we found, we found that content is still king, never changes. Barry Dillow was right 20 years ago, and he's right today. But programmatic will soon be its queen. And when we talk about PulsePoint, PulsePoint has a great innovative platform, which allows uh, you to uh, target programmatically, distribute the content, and optimize it effectively. Uh, as well as uh, taking the art of content marketing and fusing it in a way that allows you to find the right person at the right scale uh, through your content marketing. So if you'd like to learn more about PulsePoint, 
please visit PulsePoint.com, see one of our great team members, uh, or be, feel free to download the survey results from Digiday or PulsePoint.com or through the link that's listed here. And we have a special surprise. Um, we very much like talking about Lady Gaga and Tony Bennett. So one of you is lucky today. If you look underneath your seat, if there's an envelope, uh, you have won tickets to the next Tony Bennett, Lady Gaga show in your area. Further, if you use social media to promote this survey, you can be entered to win additional tickets. If you've won it, please raise your hand. That's it. Congratulations. And as I said, if you use social media to promote the survey and the results, um, you will be entered to win three more sets of tickets to Lady Gaga and Tony Bennett. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to open it up for questions for Sloan. Anyone would like to ask me a question? If not, I have one. So this merging of, of why, why do you always have questions? We should. What? <laughs> you always have questions. It's great. I mean, that's kind of like my, you know. Your job? Yeah, yeah. journalist, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of what I do. Understood. But thank you. I pride myself on my questions. <laughs> uh, what I'm, I'm curious, this merging of kind of programmatic and content, what is that going to, what kind of effect is that going to have on marketers organizationally, and how are they going to have to adopt to that kind of change? Yeah, I think there's two parts to that answer. The first is what it means for brands. Um, and I think it depends on where you, how large of a brand are you. Uh, what we're seeing more and more is large brands are creating content marketing groups. And these content marketing groups are quite different from traditional um, uh, marketing or media planners within a company. And so they're in charge of creating content and more and more importantly, finding the right audience for that. And so they're somewhat independent from the rest of the marketing team or the agency that's uh, buying the media on behalf of that. The second part of that is what it means to us in this, in, in, in this room, and particularly on the agency trading desk side. Uh, the challenge is, uh, today it's really hard to buy content marketing programmatically. Uh, it's very difficult to, to optimize, distribute that content. And so I think uh, agencies are gonna have to find a technology solution or platform to be able to help them to do that at scale. And so I think it depends on where you are uh, in the ecosystem. Well, but speaking from the publisher side, when we talk about content marketing or native ads, there are these, these pieces of content that are construed specifically for the publisher to kind of look and like their, their editorial output. And that takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of thinking of what that particular publisher is. It doesn't seem like it would necessarily mesh well with kind of all the media efficiencies that come with programmatic. And I'm, I'm curious what you think. Um, is it going to be part of native advertising and programmatic? Are those things going to come together? Yeah, I, I think it, it's a great question and I think a Thank real you. big challenge for us. <laughs> no, it was a good <laughs> and, and I think the Thank challenge you. is today we have, contrary to Jen, I think a very efficient way to buy media through the programmatic pipes that we've all put in place. And we've added this very large data layer on top of that. The question is how do we utilize those pipes and that data layer, right, to serve up these uh, content marketing units um, seamlessly into a publisher site. And what we're seeing is more and more, um, especially on the PulsePoint platform, we're seeing both the supply and demand side come in and utilize our pipes to be able to serve those ads. So I, I think it's done programmatically. I think it utilizes the pipes that are in place today. It takes a lot more uh, data, and um, we're talking attribution and cross-screen devising devices and things like that that complicate it, but I think we'll get there over the next uh, 12 to 24 months in having an efficient way to serve up content marketing units to publishers. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions from the crowd? Anyone? We have time for one quick question. All right. I guess not. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you.